All right, you Skyrim addicts, today it's time to scratch your itch. We're going to answer the question once and for all of who owns the Dragonborn soul. So, let's get started. In S tier, those will be characters that have a legitimate claim to the Dragonborn soul, and F means they don't have much of a claim at all. So let's populate F tier with all of the Daedra that he does a fetch quest for, but he never swears an oath of fealty to them. So that's all of these guys, and, oh, and by the way, the, the higher the letter is not just the stronger their claim over him, it also has to do with their relative power as well. Let's see, all these guys he merely did a fetch quest for, and just uses their sword or bow or weapon or what have you, they all go down there. Let's see, what did he do for Namira? He took a ring and ate a guy. Okay, not much there. With Periite, what did he do? He got high and killed some sick people. Again, not much to write home there. Shia Gorath's pretty powerful in reality warping, but again, not much there to talk about. So, that's out of the way. Now, the dream, what did he do? He killed some sleeping people for Vermina. Ooh, big deal. So, those guys pretty much go down there. In D tier, we have characters he did a fetch quest for, but they are more powerful than the F-tier characters, and that's why I put Maroon's Dagon there, because, again, you look to the Oblivion Crisis, and he would pretty much one-shot all the other Daedra down here, with the possible exception of Clavicus Vile, because Clavicus Vile is just freaking OP. Now we get to C-tier. In C-tier, I'm going to put Molag Bao, but I'm also going to put Hircine next to him. There's a reason for that. If you complete the Dawn Guard and you side with Harkon, you get Molag Bal's version of Vampirism. But then if after that, you go and do the Companion's Quest, you're going to get Hircine's Lycanthropy, and that'll cancel out the Vampirism. And if you do it in the reverse order, where you complete the Companion's Quest first, and then you go and do the Dawn Guard DLC, when you get Vampirism from Harkon, it'll undo the lycanthropy that Hircine gave you. So, whatever power you get from the one can be overridden by the other, so these two Daedra scale to each other. They're relative in power. But beyond that, when you talk to Cod like White Man after you have cured his lycanthropy, he says that when you go to Sarmagard, you're going to join him in fighting against Hircine and freeing all of the other pe people that were harbingers with lycanthropy. If a normal Nord wants to fight you as a Daedra, you've done something wrong. So what that tells me is that Hircine's not all that powerful, and Molag Bal scales to him, so they're pretty much on a very similar tier, where if it, I mean, you literally just boiled a witch's head, and sniffed the vapors, and that cured your lycanthropy after you killed, of course, your spectral werewolf. So what that means is, it's not that hard to cure this stuff. So, these guys are not the most powerful Daedra out there, so that is why I would say even if the Dragonborn were to die, again, he's, he could probably fight Molag Bal or Hirsen himself without having the other Daedra that want his soul do it for him. So that's why they go in, into C tier. In C tier, I'm also going to place Nocturnal. Now, I know you guys were expecting her to go higher, but let's just stop and think about this. Nocturnal's deal with Dragonborn would not hold up in any court of law, no matter how corrupt the judge is. First of all, Carlia took the oath on Dragonborn's behalf. Dragonborn never actually took the oath himself, so there's reason to believe it's not even legally binding. If you went into a court of law as an attorney, you could say, Your Honor, my client never signed those papers, someone else forged his name, and the case would get thrown out immediately. So that's one reason. But the second reason, and I find to be more compelling, if we think outside of the box, is the whole reason why the Thieves' Guild is cursed is because Mercer Frey stole the skeleton key from the Ebon Mare. We know this, but let's just stop and think about that for a second. The Thieves' Guild was cursed by Nocturnal, and when you play as the Dragonborn, chances are you're going to do all the side quests before you do the main quest, at least that's what I did. I was able to get the Thieves' Guild back on its feet before Nocturnal's curse was lifted, which means that the Dragonborn's stealth and thieving skills are at least as powerful, if not more, than Nocturnal's because of the fact that Dragonborn is able to bring the guild back to full strength even while the skeleton key is still missing, meaning that Nocturnal's curse doesn't really mean squat to Dragonborn. He's able to override it. 
So if he can override that, then he could probably override Nocturnal trying to claim his soul and take it to the Ebon Mare and to Everglow. So as a result, I'm going to say that Nocturnal has the same problem that Mullet Balan Hirsing has, and that's that her powers can be overridden by the actions of mortals. So that's why I just put her in C tier. I know you guys are probably thinking she's S tier, but I hate to break it to you. And pretty much Sithis goes in C tier for the same reason. In fact, I don't even think you take an oath to Sithis. You literally just kill people on his behalf after hearing his wife talk to you. That's pretty much it. Now, I mean, think about this. The Dragonborn actually taking the oath himself is very important. You take the oath when you join the Stormcloaks, but you don't take the oath yourself for Nocturnal. It's kind of fishy. Just look at that. Now into B tier. In B tier, I'm putting Hermaeus Mora. Because, truthfully, this could go either way. When you finish the Dragonborn DLC, and you talk to the Skull, Freya basically warns you that if you keep reading the Black Books, Hermaeus Mora will take over your mind. And, if you notice, Hermaeus Mora was powerful enough to take over the first Dragonborn, so, because of that, we know that Hermaeus Mora can override the will of a Dragonborn, but then Mirak was able to override that and rebel against him. So, he's relative to Dragonborns, but if you notice, when you defeat Mirak, and you go back to tell Mithrin and talk to Niloth, Niloth tells you that you don't look like you've been tainted by Hermaeus Mora, you look fine. Which means that the Dragonborn that we play as is able to resist Hermaeus Mora's influence. But would that last if he kept reading black books? We don't know. Dragonborn would literally just have to choose to stop reading black books, and Hermaeus Mora's influence over him would wane. So that's why I put this one in B tier. It could really go either way. Now into A tier. Azura's going into A tier, and let me tell you why. She controls destiny and fate. So that pretty much gives her a major leg up over 99% of the other characters on this list, because she could somehow unravel the Dragonborn's fate and make him join her for all of eternity. That's possible. So since she has that crazy fate-warping power, she basically has the author's pen in her hand, so as a result, I'm going to put her in A tier. Same thing for Akatosh. In fact, Akatosh goes higher in A tier than Azura, because since Dragonborn is a dragon, all dragons belong to Akatosh. Now, the reason why Akatosh is an A tier, not an S tier, is for this simple reason. We've seen one weakness in Akatosh. He has failed to claim Durnavir from the Ideal Masters, which means that there are limits to the upper ranges of his power. And for that matter, why didn't he cure the Arch Curate from vampirism? So, that's actually a problem, too, for the whole idea that he goes to Akatosh. And now we get to the one character that is in S tier, and that is Shore. Now, let me tell you why I think Shore is the definitive answer here above everything else. So for starters, it's pretty clear that the Dragonborn's a Nord. Now, I know you could play as other species, but the game is set in Skyrim, and everything's centered around Nord culture, so it's pretty evident that the Dragonborn is meant to be a Nord, especially because... When you go to Sovereign Guard and you talk to Soon, or he basically says that, oh, when your count of days is ended, you can rejoin us up here. Which means that that's where Dragonborn's pretty much destined to go. Not only this, but the three Nord warriors are waiting for Shore to give them permission to fight Alduin, and they don't fight Alduin until you talk to them. What does it mean? You're playing as Shore. The Dragonborn is probably an avatar for Shore. And then the final piece of evidence that backs this up is the fact that you can sit in Shore's throne. That's pretty self-explanatory. But here's what I think happened. I think that after Shore died, he made a deal with Akatosh to come back as a dragon. That's what I personally think happens. And if that's the case, then you would move Akatosh up to S tier as well. But this is my definitive list. Let me know what you think in the comments below.